In this lecture, we are going to start our discussion on the stability of uh, Ford Euler techniques, record Euler techniques, and uh, the trapezoidal technique. But before I move on to stability, let me switch over to the whiteboard. So we know that Z is equals to e to the power s t, where s is equals to alpha plus j omega s t alpha plus j omega okay alpha is not right right and if i draw a plane or s plane so it's like this so this is the s plane so on the x-axis i have the real part of uh, s and on the y-axis i have the imaginary part of s so we know that the stability region is the left half plane which is um, the area from the imaginary axis towards the left of the imaginary axis so this is the stability region of uh, in s plane so the, the imaginary axis is the boundary of the stability region so in the imaginary axis alpha the quantity alpha is zero and uh, omega can be both negative and positive so if we substitute this s in this equation our z becomes so it will be z equals e to the power alpha plus j omega t and if we expand this becomes e to the power alpha t plus j omega t and um, since there's a plus there this can be further simplified as e to the power alpha t times e to the power j omega t so we know that so now what i'm trying to do is um, trying to find the stability region in z plane so if i draw the z plane here me draw it straight where the x-axis is real part of z and y-axis is imaginary part of z so if i try to map this uh, left half plane the stability region into the z plane what i will get is so i know that the real part or alpha is zero so if i substitute alpha as zero um, then what i will get l is e to the power zero which is one and e to the power j omega t so that's what i will get so basically this one is uh, is considered as the radius and this e to the power j omega t is uh, so we can simplify e to the power j omega t as cos omega t plus j sine omega t so basically this this will be like a circle so where omega is the omega t is the the angle 
so if we try to plot let's say if we put omega to zero then cos of zero is one and the imaginary part is zero so we'll get one here right and if we put let's say omega t to uh, 90 degrees then this cos will be zero and this sine omega t will be one so j will be one so basically as we vary omega from zero to um, a value greater than zero uh, then it will form a circle with radius one so basically this is the boundary circle with radius one so this is the boundary and uh, we know that since this quantity is multiplied by one this will remain as one now if alpha we know that when alpha is zero that's the boundary that's this boundary but the stability region is when alpha is less than zero so in this case if alpha becomes less than zero then this quantity here will be less than one so it will be between zero and one so as alpha gets much larger towards this side then um, this quantity becomes more closer to zero but it will not be zero it will become closer to zero so which suggests that the boundary or the stability region in the z-plane is inside this unit circle so which is this this area inside the unit circle in the z-plane so that's how we can map uh, from s-plane the stability region into the z-plane Um, let me show it more clearly. So that's how we got the unit circle in the Z plane as the stability region. So now take we can consider the forward, the backward, and the trapezoidal rules. How we got Z from forward, backward and the trapezoidal rule and we can map the stability region of the s plane to those z planes and see whether it falls within this unit circle or outside the unit circle so we know that if it's outside the unit circle it will be unstable coming back to the forward euler techniques backward euler technique and trapezoidal technique if i go back one page in my notes then you can see that uh, using the forward rule I get z as uh, 1 plus ds using the backward rule I get z as 1 over 1 minus ds and using the trapezoidal rule which is also Tustin's method uh, this transformation which is called bilinear transformation I get z as 1 plus t over 2s divided by 1 minus t over 2s. So let's see where the stability region falls if we substitute s as uh, alpha plus j omega into these equations. So moving forward, using the forward Euler technique, says a stability hs will not always transform into a stable. Uh, d of z so a stable h of s will not transform into a stable d of z so that is a foiler tech ford euler technique does not always preserve stability so this is usually seen by mapping the left half of the s plane into the z plane so over here in this equation minus alpha is used because the left half that's where alpha will be negative but so when you substitute minus alpha plus j omega in this equation one plus st or ts then we get this so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part in the z plane 
So please know, note that uh, alpha will go from zero and to negative side in S plane. So if alpha is zero, then uh, the real part of Z is one. And as alpha keeps on getting bigger, um, this whole quantity goes down, the real part of Z will go into in this direction. So it can be the case where it will go far more than minus one in the real uh, Z axis. And similarly, omega t. So omega t, uh, as omega keeps growing, omega t, this quantity will increase and it can increase beyond one and negative one. So please note that uh, this is not w, this is uh, omega. And the same here. So basically using this, uh, we get a rectangular region uh, from this equation, from Ford Euler technique. So it exceeds the boundaries or the stable boundary, which is a unit circle in Z. And uh, so we can say that a stable controller uh, using the Ford Euler technique transformed into a discrete uh, space, DZ, will not always be stable. It can fall within this unit circle or it can be outside the unit circle. So it will not always be uh, stable. Now let's look at backward Euler technique. So in the backward Euler technique, it does preserve stability. So a stable H of S transforms into a stable H of Z. So mapping the left-hand plane of the S plane onto the Z plane. So please note that uh, uh, in a backward Euler technique, S Z is one over one minus T S. So if we substitute minus alpha plus J omega in this equation, then it simplifies to this. Now for alpha is equal to zero, it simplifies to one over one minus J omega T. So please note that here W is equal to omega. It's not W, it's omega. So alpha is zero, that's, uh, that's the J omega axis in S plane. So it simplifies to this. Now, this can be transformed into this equation at the bottom here. If we add half to this equation and subtract half from one minus J omega T. So this is like separated so that we can get it into this form and then into the E form. So plus half and minus half, it does not make a difference. So in the end we get, what we get is half plus uh, half E to the power alpha times two, 10 in base omega T. So this is what we get as Z. So note again that this is, uh, this is also a sec, this will also make a circle, but uh, if we look at where it makes the circle, it makes the circle in this region. So this is the unit circle, of the stability region in Z. So that circle falls over here when we use the backward uh, rectangular rule or backward Euler technique. So we can say that uh, the left half plane in S will 
fall within the stability region or within this unit circle in Z. So it says this is inside the unit circle, so it's stable. So in addition to preserving stability, the backward Euler technique is easy to apply and does not require factorization of the transfer function. However, it does not preserve the impulse and frequency response of H of S. So frequency response of H of S and H of Z when you use the backward technique will not be the same. So in fact, it highly distorts the frequency response. So we also don't want this. Now moving on to the trapezoidal technique. The trapezoidal technique also preserves stability. And while some distortion of the frequency response occurs, it can be limited to an acceptable level. So this technique preserves stability, but there is some frequency, some variations in the frequency response of uh, the discrete patient. So mapping the left-hand plane into the Z plane. So we know that using the trapezoidal technique, Z is equal to one plus uh, TS over two divided by one minus TS over two. So if we substitute, um, if we assume alpha is equal to zero and just substitute J omega in place of S, we get Z is equal to one plus J omega T over two divided by one minus J omega T over two. And then this is further simplified. So in this part, um, for the numerator and the denominator, it is converted into the polar form. And uh, this is what we get. So the first part is, is basically the radius and the E part is, is the theta part. So when we further simplify this, we get one, so this will cancel off. So you'll get one times e to the power j times two ten inverse omega t over two. <clears throat> so again, note that uh, in these notes, w is used, but w is equal to omega. So in place of w, just imagine, imagine that you have omega. So the trapezoidal technique maps the left-hand plane of the S plane into the unit circle in the Z plane. So exactly, so this is similar to what we derived when we had Z is equal to e to the power st. But they, there is some variation here because of the tangent inverse and uh, the two term here. But it maps exactly onto the unit circle. So we can say that um, if you have a stable control I or H of S, if you have a stable H of S, then it will result in a stable H of Z. There is no aliasing effect in this because it maps exactly onto the unit circle. Now moving on to the distortion part, it says, but considerable distortion occurs during the mapping process. So let me switch over to the whiteboard to explain more on the distortion part. Now we know that uh, using the trapezoidal technique, so using the, the trapezoidal technique, we get Z is equals to one times e to the power j times two tangent inverse omega t over two. So using the trapezoidal technique, we get this, which exactly maps onto the unit circle in the Z plane. So we can say that using the trapezoidal technique, any mapping uh, of the stability region in the S plane maps into the stability region in the Z plane. But if we compare the frequencies, 
that we got. If you compare the frequencies that we got uh, in uh, this conversion versus uh, the trapezoidal technique. So over here, we can see that um, the frequency we get is omega t, sorry, omega, and multiplied by t. So if you compare this equation, let me highlight this with a different color. So if you compare, this equation with this equation we can see that uh, there are differences here so over here uh, we have j omega t and over here we have j times 2 tangent inverse omega t over 2 so we can say that using the trapezoidal technique uh, omega our omega comes to so if you compare this our omega, so we can say that omega t from this equation is equal to 2 10 inverse omega t over 2 and then omega from that equation it will be equal to 2 over t 10 inverse omega t over 2. So we can say that this omega is uh, our digital omega or a discrete omega. So we can say this is our discrete uh, frequency. And instead of this, we can basically use a different variable. Let's say uh, we can use capital Omega. And we can say that that is equal to that. So this is the discrete frequency and this is our continuous frequency. Over here in this case, we could say that um, our discrete frequency is equal to the continuous frequency. But over here, using the trapezoidal technique, you can see that our discrete frequency is uh, warped. So it's, uh, it's different from omega t over 2. Sorry, it's different from omega, uh, the continuous frequency over here. So we can rearrange this and we can say that uh, omega is equals to 2 over, so omega is continuous frequency, 10 of uh, capital omega is discrete frequency, omega t over 2. So we can say omega is this if we rearrange this. Now going back to our notes. So we can see that uh, D of S when S is equals to J omega is equals to D of Z when Z is equals to E to the power J omega T. So this is not alpha. So this is E to the power J capital omega t so this is not alpha please note that and um, so if omega capital omega is uh, as we have shown 2 over t 10 inverse omega t over 2 so this distortion may be taken into account in the design of uh, the discrete compensator so 
note that frequency is distorted here the digital frequency is distorted so um and there is no distortion if uh, frequency is zero so if you put omega is zero then there is no distortion now uh, moving on to uh, the distortion so if you want to avoid distortion let's say you want to keep distortion below a certain percentage or let's say in this case below one percent then so if we want to keep distortion low it means that we want to match this frequency so this quantity with uh, this quantity so these two frequencies if they are approximately equal or they match that means distortion is less so it is noted that um, if omega t over 2 is less than 1 sixth so omega t over 2 is when you multiply this t this side and you divide by 2 so it is noted that when omega t over 2 is less than 1 sixth then 10 of uh, omega t over 2 is very close to omega t over 2 so if if this is the case so if omega t over 2 is less than 1 6 then this quantity is very close to this so let's say if omega t over 2 is 1 6 so uh, this is uh, 0 0.167 in decimal and if we take the tangent of that of this let's say um, this omega t over 2 and this omega t over 2 is the same so the tangent of this roughly comes to 0 0.168 so which is very close to 0 0.167 so that's when omega t over 2 is less than 1 6 so the error in this case is uh, the error is the 0 0.01 sorry 0 0.001 and the percentage error is if you divide that by 0 0.168 this is less than 0 0.6 percent so which is less than one percent so see if this is the condition for the frequencies to be almost or exactly or almost the same then what we can do is from this we can get the sampling frequency so we can get the sampling frequency and uh, note that sampling frequency omega s is equals to 2 pi over t where t is the sampling period so t is equals to 2 pi over omega s so if we insert uh, t equal to 2 pi over omega s into this equation what we get is uh, we get omega we get omega times pi over omega s so we get omega times pi over omega s which is less than one sixth
Now if we take pi this side, we get omega over omega s is less than 1 over 6 pi. And um, if we invert this, what we'll get is omega s over omega is greater than 6 pi. So omega s is the sampling frequency and omega is uh, uh, what your uh, frequency of interest is. So this suggests for the frequency distortion to be less than 1% or less than 0.6%, this must hold true. So omega s, which is sampling frequency must be over omega must be greater than 6 pi and 6 pi is uh, close to 20. So that's where we get our 20 from. So omega, we can say omega s over omega should be greater than around 20. So our sampling frequency should be 20 times greater than uh, our frequency of interest. And that will help to keep the distortion low. So our discrete frequency, which is omega, would be uh, approximately close to our continuous frequency, a small omega. And over here, we can say that omega s is our sampling frequency. And that is exactly what we can see in the notes here. Omega s over omega is greater than 20. Now moving on. There is an example given. So in this example, if we apply bilinear transformation to H of S, so in our case, H of S was, we started off with A over S plus A. So if we apply bilinear transformation, so in place of S, we substitute the equation that we got from trapezoidal integration which is this, and uh, in this case, we assume that omega s is, which is two pi over t, is greater than 20 times, uh, we can say, omega. So if we substitute s in this equation, so we get hz is equal to a over two over t times z minus one over z plus one plus a, and then it simplifies to a z plus a divided by a plus 2 over t times z plus a minus 2 over t and this is equal to output over input so let's say if we are if this was the equation of our continuous controller now our discrete controller equation is this in terms of z which is output over input um, controller output divided by error so uz over az. Now we can convert from this form into difference equation form. So in difference equation form, we will get this a plus two over t times u k plus a minus two over t times u k minus one is equal to a times e k plus a times e k minus one. And then we can get uh, a discrete or difference equation for the output of the controller uk which is this and we can program this equation into our digital controller which will replace our continuous controller <laughs>